I certainly didn't expect to be reporting the deaths of two of my favorite anime studios of all time this year, and I definitely think this could be considered one of the worst years in anime history because of the other tragedy, but while tragic, the downfall and death of Gainax is not something to be sad about. The company Gainax died years ago. They lost a lot of their life when Anno left and formed Kara. They had a, a pretty much death blow and Imaishi left with the rest of the guys to form Trigger. And what we were left with is a threadbare studio that has struggled to stay alive, plummeted downwards. And now we have an insight into why this was the case. Thanks to Anno coming out with an expose uh, in response to the death of Gainax. So to preface why this information is coming out, if you haven't heard what's gone on with this studio over the last couple decades, you know, Hideki Anno left in the early 2000s, Imaishi left in the early 2010s, uh, both of those were, you know, head directors, sort of the de facto directors for their major IPs, very successful shows during certain periods of the company's, uh, you know, heydays. And uh, they both left to form their own studios. It, I would imagine for the same reasons, considering what Anno has to say about Gainax uh, in this article. I would not be surprised if Imaishi had a similar story to tell. After the departure of Imaishi, Gainax slowed considerably in its output. They had the Madaka Box seasons in 2012 and then C3Bu in 2013. Those were the only things they produced in those two years, both of them adaptations by directors who were not the best known in the studio, though, you know, Madaka Box's Shoji Saiki had been around, done plenty of shows. But uh, in the year 2014, the only thing they produced was a series of five-minute short episodes called Magicka Wars with these weird over-designed characters that looked like they belonged in a phone game. And it, you know, it was not a show anybody was paying any attention to. I don't know what they were going for. I don't know what it was made for. But it's the only thing they made in 2014. And that was the point at which, for me, I already felt like, oh, Gainax is gone. You know, they're not making shows anymore. There's, you, none of their staff seems to be left. None of the people who make the stuff they're known for are around. So why would anything new come out of them? They kind of showed signs of life in 2015 when they did Wish Upon the Pleiades which some people liked. I think it was, you know, I, I mean, I don't know that it was like a roaring success or anything. You know, I think most original IPs um, that are successful in this decade would make it to the status of having a movie movie adaptation um, or, or tie-in, which uh, it did not. But that's the last thing Gainax has done. That was 2015. And there's a certain fracturing event that happened in 2015 that might very well be the answer to why. So in early 2015, Gainax started creating a bunch of different companies. They created Gainaxes of different prefectures throughout Japan. And then they selected one of those, Fukushima Gainax, and had that be where the, the current president of Gainax took over and then put somebody else in the president's chair at Gainax, effectively making them two separate organizations, but both of which are using the name Gainax in the branding and claiming connection to Evangelion and to, you know, to have some rights to, to, to using it. Because when Anno uh, left Studio Gainax to form Kara, there was a joint agreement between them to use uh Ava for merchandising. So, you know, Anno had the rights to actually creating Ava, but both of them could create merch. Now, Anno has full rights to the rebuild of Evangelion. And when you know that, it contextualizes a lot of the design decisions of the rebuild of Evangelion. Because obviously, the decision to differentiate the characters is so that they could overpower the original with their new merchandise, with the, you know, with these versions of the characters, which they have full control over and rights to. You know, if those are the only things that you can purchase, then, you know, all the money for Ava goes to the people who are making Ava, as opposed to the people whom, as we learned through this article, are just profiteering off of the name of Ava for long stretches of time without compensating the actual staff who created it uh, to the extent that they deserved, 
um, while people who are not involved in production at all were making tons of money and spending it frivolously on things that projects that did not come to fruition um, and, and just not really caring when things like that happen, taking no responsibility, not attempting to change the way they were doing things at all. So Gaina was established in 2015 and they started producing ONAs, just little things that I, I mean, I've never even heard of any of the shows they've done. I don't know if they're kids shows or what, but the first proper TV show that they did was Piano No Mori. And I actually really liked the first season of that show. I had it on my best of 2018 list. I thought they did some impressive things with the production, even if it was uneven at times. But from what I've heard of season two, the production turned into a complete disaster with unfinished episodes, render errors in the 3D scenes, just really like explosively bad uh, production glitches. And so obviously they crumbled under the weight of trying to make a two season show even when it was a split core and um you know the next the only thing that they did other than that in 2019 was hulaing babies which looked like it could have very well been a one man project essentially a series of like 3 minute episodes which while fun and cute you know uh doesn't speak of like a massive you know production that's using everybody in this company um, so th that was it. They've got something that's scheduled for 2021, but it turns out that, uh, they are still shuffling around people at all the different Gynax companies. And just this year, they appointed a new president to Gynax who had no association with it before, who then was uh, criminally charged recently, arrested recently, with uh, with allegations of having um, ha told a teenage voice actress to take off her clothes and, and allow him to take pictures of her as some sort of like audition or something or you know some kind of Weinstein esque promise of advancement. I don't know. He flirted with her a bunch of times and made her take her clothes off. So. As soon as this happened, the Gynax website shut down. Gynax effectively appears to be dead. The the actual Gynax, the original one, the company that started it all, you know, that Gynax is dead now. However, Gyna, which is where the guy who had been president of Gynax until he transferred to Gynax, <laughs> tried to transfer to Gyna rather, um, is, you know, is still active president there. So this other company that they put this guy in charge of, you know, uh, basically has to be dissolved immediately because of these allegations, but there's still all these other Gynaxes out there. Why are there so many Gynaxes? So in the wake of this arrest, a lot of Japanese news publications were writing that the, you know, the studio the the head director of the studio that made evangelion has been arrested you know and so people would obviously reading a headline like that draw conclusions about ano even though the way it's worded doesn't technically say that it's ano it says you know the studio who made eva but like yeah i mean well why would it be like why would the average person know that the same director isn't still there if you're mentioning eva in the headline you know so Ano, uh, after, you know, having seen this, this get run away with in the news, uh, publishes his own long ass, uh, expose of Gynax and Econ, I have to thank immensely for, uh, sort of breaking this news in English on Twitter, I guess, uh, by translating the highlight reel of, um, what happened in this, what he talks about in this expose. So here's, I'll just read Econ's tweets first so we can get a taste of exactly what Anno is telling us about Gynax's history. Anno exposes Gynax. Apparently they had struggled for a long time and Anno saw the writing on the wall and left. Gynax kept borrowing money from the man. He agreed in exchange for the rights to Fooly Cooly and Gunbuster, but they duped him and moved the rights to a shell company. Specifically, Gynax asked for a loan of several million, which Anno gave interest free, unheard of, because he had many friends still at Gynax. In exchange, he wanted the Gunbuster rights and the rights to Fooly Cooly for his protege, Surumaki, at Kara. 
But before the deal was final, Gainax changed their mind and wanted even more money for the rights to Fooly Cooly and Gunbuster. Time passes and Anno finds out that Gainax sold these properties for more money to a third party, hence the Fooly Cooly sequels, bypassing all the original creators. Years go by and Gainax stops paying or responding. They ghost Anno. Eventually, Anno decides to take legal action in 2017. Anno sues Gainax for the money he's owed and the production material he made working on Nadia and Gunbuster. Gainax fights publicly and loses. However, Anno discovers that Gainax he's been suing has long since become a hollow shell. All the company's assets have been moved to shell companies while the suit was ongoing, like Gainax West and Gainax Fukushima, so he gets nothing. Then there's all the kitty diddling stuff recently in Japanese press painting it as Ava Guy Studio diddled kids, so Anno is pissed and wants to make public how much he hates Gainax now, distance himself from the diddling. So, now, this article is eight pages long that Anno wrote, and I read it through Google Translate. It's pretty readable. You can understand what's what's going on. You have to make some allowances for the grammar. Anno goes through his entire fucking history with Gainax, essentially, in this uh, expose, and it's pretty fascinating because he basically paints the company as just having perpetually been mismanaged. And it's really interesting when we consider the identity of Gainax. Gainax is a studio that was not branched off from any other studio. It's like the only one that was nev not a product of, you know, people leaving one studio to form another. There have been several that have left from Gainax, including Gonzo, um, which, you know, people forget about because I guess the staff who left weren't as like memorable Gainax people. Gainax sprang out of a benefactor of a bunch of guys in college who were extremely talented, who formed together to try to make like really high quality anime. They put the quality first. However, this meant that they always struggled financially. They put too much into the quality. Uh, you know, they, they had lots of different attempts at things that didn't necessarily go well. You know, Honey Mize, this huge expensive project, was not a financial success. Um, you know, they might have had more success with some of their other intellectual properties, but really, it's Evangelion that blew them up in 1995. Now, right from the get-go, it's highly revealing that Anno states that he did not want to do Eva with Gainax. He says in this article that neither him nor King Records, who were the main sponsor of the show, wanted Gainax to do animation production because they don't think the company's managed well. Already, you know, because of the, the failures of projects, probably, I mean, I think Uru and Blue had already, you know, that whole project, which had put Anno into the depressive funk that, you know, many attribute to the creation of Ava. Um, he didn't want Gainax to do it. And uh, they begged him to, so he did. And as he puts it, Gainax did not invest in Ava, so they didn't have the, uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't make all the money from the show, essentially. King Records was the one who compensated the, the staff of Ava. Whereas the company Gainax, because they had merchandising rights to Ava, had people in different departments start making games and shit that were extremely successful, you know? So their PC hardware or software is, is uh, you know, is selling and causing way more revenue to come into Gainax than ever before because the merchandising for Ava is making them tons of money regardless of, uh, you know, what they had made through the production of the actual show itself. But this money is not going to the people who made Ava. It's going to the people who are making the merch as well as to just the upper brass of Gainax, who some of whom had nothing to do with the creation of Ava at all. So Anno saw this as a huge problem. And, you know, he had been on and off with the studio throughout the years, you know, going off to direct... Um, other live action films, but he still worked closely in association with Gainax on a bunch of stuff. I mean, Cutie Honey is produced under Gainax. Um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, he says in this article that Love and Pop, despite actually not being produced under Gainax, for some reason they have the rights to it. I don't know if they were the distributor, but uh, apparently he has not made any royalties and residuals off of that or Nadia or Gunbuster. 
So whatever money Gainax has made off of those properties, Anno, despite directing those, has not made any money off of that, you know, and just generally was not making as much off of Ava as he, you know, very well ought to have being the goddamn person who created the series. And meanwhile is watching the money that the studio is making from his creation not only go to people who weren't even involved in the creation and are not doing anything meaningful to contribute to the studio, seemingly in his eyes, but also it's uh, it's going to um, all these projects that they're just flippantly throwing money at. Even if they fail, they don't care. That people are just like, oh, we have all this money. We could do whatever we want. Let's just launch into it and, and, you know, whatever we fucking feel like. And if it fails, well, you know, we're cushioned by this money, even though that money is not trickling into the actual production, you know, the people who are making the shows. So this is why Anno left the studio. He saw it as mismanaged. He saw it as, uh, you know, taking advantage of its creative staff essentially and uh fucked off while the getting was good so he goes and creates kara now another thing he mentions continually this article that's extremely interesting is this idea that gainax did not want to work with other studios they wanted everything to be in-house so they would have all of the rights to everything however it seems like ano really wanted to work with other studios and the one allowance that he got from them was on the production of ava because he got them to work with Production IG. That was how they were able to make the show a success, in his words, you know. But, like, that was not something Gainax regularly wanted to do. So, when Anno leaves to form Kara, initially Kara is just him and his assistant. And he is ready to have other production studios and, you know, just like a coalition of whoever he can, you know, get to make this movie. And, like, whoever works on it gets paid for it, you know, like just a reasonable system, essentially, um, without it being like just protective of this upper brass of this company who wants to keep the money flowing through them, you know. Anno and Gainax both have some rights to Evangelion. Gainax still can merchandise the show, and they start to become successful through uh, the pachinko machines. So they start around the same time as Anno's, you know, forming Kara. They are you know, forming these brand deals with Ava Pachinko that blow up and are making, you know, Ava makes more money through Pachinko than it's ever made through any other part of it. So money starts flowing into Gainax again, but as Anno puts it, they start doing the same exact shit. They start launching projects that go nowhere, you know, funding everything, just general mismanagement. So if you consider that Gainax, we're, we're looking at a studio that struggled through the 80s and 90s, the early 90s, um, finally has a hit with Ava, has all this money, and they blow through it. And by the early 2000s, Gainax is on its last legs. Anno's like, I'm getting out of here. But they have the saving throw of Pachinko. So Gainax is able to now, you know, create the next 10 years of a bunch of admittedly great shows. You know, everything Imaishi did, directed, is in this decade, you know. Um, but eventually he takes... The rest of the staff and fucks off because of probably the same reasons. And now Gainax is just a money sinkhole. And meanwhile, along the way of all of this, there are side tangents about how, you know, the director up before the one who the, the current president who, you know, is currently cur the current president is the one who were uh, of Gaina is the one who's mostly concerned with in this story. Uh, but the president from before him was had to be had to retire after being busted for massive tax evasion so already this company's history is full of you know of like criminal activity hiding at the top of their corporation so the hope would be that with that former president exiled this new one would be better and this is one of Anno's school friends i mean if you've watched blue blazes we're talking about one of the characters in my fucking japanese mangas um 
who is friends with Anno in in uh, in college. So it's really funny because the way his character is presented in that show, it's not as though it's necessarily a favorable portrayal anyways. So why all the weird restructuring that this studio did in 2015? So you may remember before how I said that in 2014, the only thing Gainax had made was Magicka Wars. And in 2015, they made Pleiades as their last show. So how did they save themselves? Turns out, in 2014, Gainax came to Hideaki Anno, in spite of all of their disagreements and differences over the years, and all the ways that they had tried to fuck him over, and they asked him for 100 million yen to keep themselves afloat. They said if they didn't make that much money, they would be crushed, so they needed that much so he said, feeling the danger of entrusting the rights of Ava to a company with such a management situation forever, he, you know, told them, I will give you this money if you hand over the rest of the merchandising rights to Ava. So Ava no longer with Gainax. So obviously Gainax took this money. They made Pleiades. It wasn't a success. And they no longer have any Ava money coming in. So... There's nothing to just prop them up and keep them afloat, and they don't have the money to pay back Anno. So when Anno comes knocking and asking for that money, they have nothing to show for it. Now, in 2015, again, they had broken off into a bunch of shell companies. And then during the lawsuit, where Anno was trying to get the money from them, they transferred everything to Gaina so that Gainax didn't have anything to give Anno once he won the suit. Alongside all of this happening, in 2014, there was a period in which Gainax was planning to sell the rights to Gunbuster and Fooly Cooly to Kara so that they could, you know, potentially do something with those IPs. However, all of a sudden, they decided to hike up the price six times higher of what they were asking for. I don't know if this is because they uh, were already burning through that loan that he gave them or what, but they they asked for way more money. Anno was confused. He did not respond. And then finds out in 2015 that without even consulting him or anybody involved in the actual creation of Fooly Cooly or Gunbuster, uh, those had been sold to other companies without his knowledge. So this is why Production IG made the Fooly Cooly sequels. Because Production IG, who also needed money at the time, you know, wanted to profit off of this IP that they had already been, you know, jointly involved in in the first place. Like, they were part of the production of it uh, in the original, but they were not the creative staff. They were not the original, you know, developers of the idea who work at Kara. And so completely undercutting them and without notification, they just gave Fooly Cooly over to Production IG and we got the two worst sequels of all fucking time. In fairness, I haven't actually watched Alternative, but Progressive is... Ugh. So it basically seems like the Gainax racket over the past five years or so has been debt avoidance by way of creating shell companies. I would not be surprised if Hideaki Anno is not the only person who is, you know, uh, indebted to in this situation. I'm sure that each of these companies might be avoiding debts from a different person. Uh, however, currently, the money has not come back to Anno that he loaned to Gainax. Gainax is now just completely gone thanks to the fact that the president who they put in charge has, you know, now been put behind bars and the, they're, they just kind of quietly shut down. But, you know, the person who owes the money is still at Gaina. And Gaina who, you know, whose productions finally kicked in this year but faltered immediately, has not produced anything since winter. Their next announced show is for 2021. There has been no further news on the talk of production of, you know, a season three of Gunbuster or a uh, the, the second Wings of Honey Mice movie that's been in production hell since the early 90s, but they still insist it's supposed to happen. Uh... I just have to imagine that the the top brass, I just want to know what their lifestyle is like at this point. Like, they're not making things, they're just moving money around. And without access to the Ava dollars, I mean, they still have the rights to plenty of other successful franchises that they're not doing anything with. They still have, you know... Uh, 
uh, I don't know, perhaps connections in places, but I would have to assume that they've just run this very badly, you know, thought out company in, for a long time. This this bad idea of how to run a company while, uh, you know, leveraging their name and really Anno's reputation in order to gain funding to put stuff together. And it's not that everything they've made has been bad. It's just that the the mindset behind the company is wrong and that the people who are making the company run that way uh, are not the people who are creatively involved in these projects. They're just management who is, you know, trying to hold on to this money to promote God knows what lifestyle. Like, I really have to, like, sit here and imagine, like, what the fuck... What are, what are these people doing with the money? Like, are they working at all? Are they literally just creating companies so that they can keep a revenue stream going while they, I don't know, fuck off and do a lot of drugs? I, what do you even do with your life? Who knows? But, uh, yeah. it's a, This has been a riveting story. Reading through this was... It gave a lot of context into Anno's trajectory over his career. Just the the reasoning behind, like, clearly this was a guy who, you know, um, recognized that what they were doing was really good. And in the early days, it was enough for him just to get to make stuff that was good. Because that was what he cared about more than making money. And then with Ava, he started making money. And he said himself that initially... He, you know, he didn't leave Gainax in spite of their poor practices because he was making money, even though there were certain people who weren't who he thought deserved to be. Um, You know, he had money, so it wasn't such a big deal. But then, you know, and he also could go off and fuck off and do his own thing and make a bunch of live action movies and all that other shit he did. But, you know, when he sort of saw the state of Gainax upon his return, he was like, oh, like, I can't trust Ava to this company. You know, like, they're not going to treat the people who continue to work on it correctly. So, um, you know, I've, I've speculated for a long time back when my, I did my, who is Hideki Anno, uh, you know, video two parter where I just kind of dissected his history to some extent. Um, I basically posited that the rebuild of Evangelion existed to fund anime, that it existed to give work to people so that, um, you know, the the name Ava and the popularity of it and the capability of it to make money would be put to good use. It would be a creative way of, uh, you know, putting that name towards stuff like the Animator Expo that Kara did, you know, which is a, a monumental thing that I don't think would have been possible without the money that they make from these fucking rebuild movies. But there was one more really interesting takeaway in this uh, write-up. And um, the the translation here, you know, again, I'm reading this to Google Translate, so I, I couldn't say that this is exactly what he was saying. But Anno seems to indicate that... When he decided to make Rebuild of Ava, he froze an original project he was working on. And his logic was that it's basically just Ava anyways, essentially. Like, it seemed as though whatever this new project is he was working on was close enough to being like Ava that he just thought, why not just remake Ava? And I would imagine incorporate elements of this other story. So as we watch Ava transform across the Rebuild movies, I really have to wonder if perhaps the story that we get from Ava's 3.0 and onwards is Anno's new story that because the idea of this character waking up 14 years after the world had been destroyed because of his bravado and everybody's shitting on him fits well enough with the characters of Ava and is, you know, like it could make sense as the the future from Ava. He just went and made it the future in Ava and, you know, fucked around with the mid part of the story in the second movie so that it could lead into this. But I really think that that's probably what this is. And I, that's just my speculation based on what I got out of this article and was the tipping point of me deciding I had to make a video about this because it's just so much interesting information. And I'm going to be waiting for somebody to hopefully translate this properly. 
But, uh, you know, I would love to know more about how much of that project that supposedly was similar enough to Ava that he just did Ava again instead. Um, I want to know how much of that made it into the rebuild of Evangelion and if that is indeed the concept. Because it would make perfect sense and it would, uh, you know, not justify 3.0, but at least allow me to look at it through the lens of... It's not supposed to be Ava, you know? Um, so, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's it. I hope you thought the story was interesting and, uh, and not too upsetting. I mean, essentially, Gainax has been dead for a long time. We have, you know, Kara, love it or hate it. We have Trigger, love it or hate it. I love him. This is, this is a riveting ride. And I just want to know, will Ano ever get his money? Will Gaina somehow recover? Uh, what is it with the president? Like, what is wrong with him mentally? Because this seems like the behavior of somebody who's, you know, whose mind is not all right. So I'm curious about all that. But um, I just hope, I hope that uh, Anno, you know, continues to have better luck with the people he works with into the future.